He says, okay. The next time you guys do questions, how best do Taylor Jenkins and the Grizzlies organization control slash rebuild the culture in Memphis? From all the jar stuff to the Dylan Brooks incidents, like the thing with Donovan Mitchell, it feels like this chip on the shoulder, forgive the term, bad boy culture is on the cusp of turning very toxic. Now, BJ, I know you like to keep it on the court. You remind me all the time. But this off-court stuff is starting to spill onto the court. For example, Dylan Brooks missed the mm-hmm, last game mm-hmm. for being suspended for too many technical fouls. Ja Morant missed the last game as he's spending some time away for the team given his recent incidents that are still under investigation. And we'll talk about those more once we have some more clarity in the situation. But you're watching a, a team now with two guys missing time for you know things that aren't actually basketball. So what do you think about the culture in Memphis? Are they in danger of letting such a promising organization because they've got an all-star superstar talent at the point guard position. They've got Desmond Bain, who when he was healthy is an elite three point shooter and a great two guard. They've got Jaron Jackson Jr. Defensive player of the year candidate. They've got Steven Adams, who is probably the most experienced player on the roster. Very solid in his role. He knows how to play his role perfectly. And they've got a bunch of other guys that can come in and do things. But all of that could be jeopardized by the things that happen outside of the hardwood floor. So my question to you is how do they prevent things from going pear shaped? Well, you know, this, this team has been portrayed in the media over the last year or so. They are, they've been the, really the darling of the NBA. ESPN I mean, did a whole special a lot of last, last year. They went to Memphis and did a whole they, 24 hours of programming about the Grizzlies. You know, they've had a lot of media attention. Deservingly so. This team has played very well. I think by all accounts, they are ahead of schedule. Uh, they've drafted really well. You know, they've drafted incredibly well. It seemed like every move they've made, you know, they've come out, they've played, they've developed their players. Taylor Jenkins is a cr- incredible young coach. They've done everything right. Suddenly now, over the last two or three weeks, you know, things have been coming now off the court. Okay. And, you know, things happen, all right, which is fine. Now they're going to have to deal with this, you know, because now, you know, these guys, these young guys, you know, who are suddenly John Morantz and Dylan Brooks and all of these young players, Desmond Bain, you know, now all of a sudden you got to start making financial commitments to these young players. And with that financial commitment, now we start getting into – the teeth, you know, or the heart of what professional basketball is all about, right? Mm -hmm. So what we know they've done, the basketball business, talking about talent. Yeah. You know, we talk about this team and what's going on. You know, one thing, Mo, I I will say this. This team has an edge to it, right? They live on the edge, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, Mo, we have to say this in full transparency. You need an edge to win in this league. Absolutely. And they have an edge. Now, now, Mo, it appears now that's the basketball business. Now let's talk about the business of basketball. Mm-hmm. With the business comes now an enormous responsibility, not only on the court, because on the court, these guys are fine. When they do play, hey, they compete, they're entertaining, they, you know, they, you know, they're talking trash, they're doing all of the things, you know, that that, that, that you do when you're out there playing. But suddenly now, Mo, it appears to be, again, appears, all of these things are allegedly, I don't know any, yeah. I don't know the facts of the case or anything. Now, suddenly now it's affecting the business of basketball. Now, mm-hmm. this is what we're talking about. Okay. So now let's get to that. You know, it, it, you know, when you start, you know, in a relationship, Mo, there's one thing that is absolutely necessary in every relationship you have. You know, we happen to be talk- talking about basketball, whether you're in a personal relationship, a relationship with a mentor, a relationship with your coach. The foundation of every relationship is trust. Yeah. Right now, Mo, these guys have found a way not to be on the floor for their team, right? Mm-hmm. You, you know, I found nothing in my life, Mo. Nothing in my life that has been more enjoyable to be a part of a team. Okay. And I'm 55 and I can say that, you know, I I love my family, my kids, my parents and all these things, but nothing, I found nothing in my life 
that has been more fulfilling than being part of a team. Like, and suddenly now these young men, whether this has happened before, but certainly they've come together as a group. They have a single thought and they are a team, you know, and suddenly now John Morant, their leader is not available. Mm -hmm. Dylan Brooks now is not available. Uh, what's the one kid's name? He's got an injury. Um, yeah, Brandon Clark. And I, I think Brandon that's going to be huge in the playoffs because yeah, Brandon Clark, Jaron Jackson Jr. Available. can't stay out of foul trouble. Just, just to quickly jump in, Jaron Jackson Jr. can't stay out of foul trouble. Now, Brandon Clark is one of the best backup big men in the entire NBA. So him not being there is going to be a huge loss, especially when it comes to offensive rebounding, which is a staple of the Grizzlies scoring abilities because we all know they struggle in the half court. So him not being available for the rest of the season, in particular the playoffs, is going to hurt them. So we're going to have to see if Xavier Tillman can step up and do some damage. But continue. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, so they, they, they now they have something. Now they have adversity. Now they have adversity with this group. That's a fact. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some of it's off the court. As you and I know, Mo, and, and all of our listeners know, and all of our viewers know, injuries are a part of the game. You know, Steven Adams is out, who's probably, if not the oldest guy, one of the oldest guys. He's, on the the, he's only 29, and he's the oldest guy on their roster, which makes me think a lot okay. of these off-court things could be prevented by having some veterans on that roster and in that mix. Yeah, and and the greatest teacher, Mo, as you know, I can't ever forget when I was 20 years old, Mo. I can't ever forget that. That's the one thing as you age, Mo, you can't ever forget, you know, the, the greatest teacher is experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you back in the day. No, Mo, I was 23. So I, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not condoning anything. I'm just saying, I get it. The greatest experience. I have a 22 year old son and I have to remind myself all the time. He's 22 and he's learning and she's learning and we, we figure it out. But because our foundation is built on trust, it's always coming from a place of love. So you say, okay, now what, what can the Memphis Grizzlies do? You know, Mo, you've heard me say this off air, not many times I say it on air, but because we are in this situation, you know, Mo, you have to be able to function in any environment, in a dysfunctional environment. Now, right now, Mo, this is a little dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. Whether right, wrong, or whatever, how, whatever, when the facts come out, this isn't something that you, you know, because on the outside looking in, you're going, okay, what's going on here? Now it's time for the leaders to step up, right? Ownership, the executives, the coaches, and the, the leaders within the group are going to have to come together and they're going to have to figure this one out. Things are going to happen. That, that, Mo, I've never been on a, on a team where there wasn't something going on. Sometimes it hits the media. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, Mo, it doesn't. You gotta take care <laughs> but, of that in the house. But you get, but it's got to be taken care of, okay? And they have to be take care of the group because if you don't take care of it, Mo, it can fracture the group. And this is a th clearly this team here. They found chemistry with 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 each other. That's that's yeah. That's everyone, the clear cut. Everyone, everyone else everyone what the Grizzlies that. need to contend. And I my answer is always just time. Like they've got all the pieces okay. there and it's just time of playing together and more experience. Now, and get that. but if it doesn't figure itself out, Mo, this will be one of the great stories where you say coulda, woulda, shoulda. Mm -hmm. All right. So you ask, what, what can they do? You know, Mo, the, the, the greatest lesson I've learned on being a part of a team, being a part of a team, right? Everyone wants a leader, right? You know, everyone say, well, this person is the leader. You know, collective leadership, Mo, is the, the one thing that we don't talk enough about. Collective leadership, right? Just because the best player is on the team doesn't necessarily mean that they are the leader of a group, okay? And that's the one thing that I've learned over my experiences, especially at the professional ranks, is that if you're going to have a good team, you got to have collective leadership. The In my my area was 12 guys. This area was 15. The 15th guy has just as much as responsibility as the best guy. Because if one guy fails in their leadership and what they bring to the group, the whole thing crumbles. Mm -hmm. You go, well, that, how could that be? But that's how it is, Mo, right? If, a, if the 15th guy is not 
playing his part or playing his role, this thing will come down. So I will say this. How can they correct this? And I'm going to give the Memphis Grizzlies and anyone who's a part of a team, whether it's in the office or wherever, if you're part of a group, Mo, one of the things you always look for is you look for the following. It is a true gift, Mo, when you find a person that is going to tell you the truth. It's a gift. Facts. Facts. Mo, Mo, I don't care who that person is. It's a gift. It's a gift to you individually. It's a it's a it's a gift to the collective group because one person telling the group the truth has the power to change the dynamics of a group. And let me tell you something about power, Mo, true power. True power doesn't panic. True okay. power doesn't panic, Co especially collected. when you it's a collective effort. And wherever that comes from with this group, Mo, I hope it happens for this group because every team has a different challenge. Now this group has a different challenge ahead of you that's different than you know, the Orlando Magic's challenge. It was different than the LA Lakers challenge, which is different than the Utah Jets. Every group, this group has a challenge. But, Mo, I hope that someone, I don't care who it is, that will give this group the truth. Because if they get the truth and the truth enters into their locker room, into their, their group, or into their meeting, they have a chance, Mo. I've never been on a team where it's been perfect. I've never been on a team where there's been major problems. And when I say major problems, Mo, major problems, okay? Sometimes you heard about the problem, and in this case, it's out in the open now. Sometimes, Mo, these problems never get out. But let me tell you something. Every group is, ch is challenged with something. So I would hope, Mo, that they have the courage as an organization, as a team, as individuals to confront themselves because let me tell you something, on the court, that's all I know. That's all I can see. That's all you and I can see. This team has a chance to do something. And I would hope that they would learn from whatever's going on. I would, hurt, I would hope that someone collectively, someone individually, whatever needs that will come in there and that comes to them and then they could sort it out and they could move on. Because Mo, every group has to face this. And you would hope that no one gets hurt, Mo. And what I've heard, clearly, that's another discussion. But I'm not going to address that because I don't know. And that's a, I'll let the people who are experts in that handle that. But I would hope that whatever is going on that's being reported, that that happens because every team, Mo, has to address this situation the same exact way. And that takes courage to do it because no problem a little problem, Mo, has the potential to mess up a whole team. Yep. And this problem right here, Mo, because if they don't figure this out, you and I will be saying years from now, man, they had a chance to get it done and da, 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 da. And hopefully we'll say it didn't. And, 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 and it's an entirely different scenario, right? I'm not comparing one situation to the other. But... I remember you and I have this conversation early in the season. I mean, we had it in preseason this year with the Golden State Warriors. Mm -hmm. After the Draymond Green okay. and Jordan Poole. Yeah, I mean, Mo, just based on what we saw, whatever things happen, right? You know what I mean? I'm not saying, I'm not comparing this situation to, to, to that situation. But what I'm saying is when a problem happens with a group, it has to be addressed. So whoever that is, the leadership has to has to rise to the occasion and try to figure it out and you try to get the truth into the room and then hopefully you can you know move on and uh, learn from it well hopefully they do figure it out um because they have so much potential as a group and let's hope that they can mature a little bit and get to 